Hey everyone, I had a ton of fun at Draft, and this draft was sponsored by patron Jeff Manzanares. The man you know who has sent us several fat packs has also been backing on Patreon for several months, helping bring these in real life drafts to you. So thank you, Jeff, and all patrons. We're doing some awesome things with the Patreon. I'd love to have you at least go check it out. Uh, you don't have to back, but uh, we've, I think we've got some pretty cool ideas coming, and we're all working together now. We're spending the backer money all together as one. It's really a, really a fun time. We're planning and budgeting how we want to spend. Right now, we're picking out what vintage product we want to open. We've got some tech that we bought for the studio so that streaming can be better. And uh, I really look forward to uh, continuing to go down that road with it. So enjoy the draft. Let's have some fun. All right. Here we go with another in real life draft. There's a friendly local Bob, consumer of the Dirty Bob drink, which is, I believe, some apple beer with Jameson in it. I don't know. But here we go. First pack. Uh, pretty terrible rare. There's an immolating glare. Uh, that's pretty good. Bowler Salvo, Blinding Drone are all fine, but probably not first pickable, so I'll just take the glare and be happy. The guy on my left is actually Alex, the guy uh, from our EDH videos. He wants to shoot some more today, actually, so hopefully we can do that. And there's the local guy that runs the game shop passing the wrong direction. We politely remind him. Now here you're gonna see uh, I don't recommend you try this at home. I overvalue green white and General Taziri is really feels bad. Feels bad man when you open that mythic uh, in draft probably in any situation in life. Um, but it is what it is. And if you've watched me stream at twitch.tv slash mtg headquarters you know i do like to gamble a bit and uh that's what i did i took it i was hoping that uh green white would be available and i figured if it's not um it's early enough to course correct uh here's stocking drones very good um you know in this format many games are won simply by curving out you know turn two turn three turn four and limited it's so important with the lack of good removal so i've found that my win percentage definitely has gone up as i've prioritized two drops more so yeah i'm see a two drop i'll move it to the top path warden is definitely good step glider is very good one of the one of the best uh creatures out there I mean, obviously there are bombs that aren't rare, like Relief Captain, stuff like that, but Step Cloud is very good, 2-4 Flyer. So Netcaster Spider here, since I'm, I'm also noticing Thought Harvester here, and I'm like, man, blue's probably open. Uh, there's some mildly playable blue cards in just about every pack, but I'll take the Netcaster Spider. I think it's a fine card. I mean, it's a great 2-3 three for 3 that can block flyers. I think it's a good card. Um, here this pack, another Birthing Hulk, a Sears Lantern, score, score, Sky Climber. So I have quite a few options here. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, 7 drops are suboptimal. But I took 1. I actually think after drafting, I, I lowered my grade on Birthing Hulk. I mean, I think it's fine. But for seven, there are better creatures for seven mana, I think. You have to really be in that green-black deck to get the mileage. Here's another stalking drone. Um, easy pick. Even as a 2-2 two -two for two, it's great. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about my first seven picks here. We've got a great little green-white deck going. 
Uh, it's not the traditional green white by playing some of the colorless stuff, but stocking drone's great. You can mix in a few colorless land sources and it can be really difficult to deal with. Uh, here, yeah, blue is definitely open. A profit of distortion in this pack. I'm just gonna cut that. I also think green blue is a fine uh, color combination too. So I figure I'm deep in green. I better start taking some of these good blue cards. And I believe I properly read this because in pack three, you're gonna see um, it's just it's just raining bomb blue cards. Like I definitely could have had a really good green blue deck. This is a actually new location for the shop. I actually really like it. It's a little bit bigger. Um, here I'm gonna pick something off camera, but oh, there we go. Holdout settlement. Pack was pretty dead. There, I can see it. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. The camera must have picked up what he was looking at. Well, obviously it did, right? Um, here's another birthing hulk and a shoulder to shoulder. Here's a big mistake. I should have taken that shoulder to shoulder. That was dumb. Um, bad pick by me. Two birthing hulks is way too many. And a shoulder to shoulder in my deck is super powerful. Just, you know. I, I see the mistake now, and uh, here I take a Unity. I think this card is underdrafted, even on MPGO. It's so often I end up with like multiples of it as just draft chaff. I don't know what's wrong with it. Four mana instant that does support two and untaps creatures. Like I, I don't know. It obviously isn't as good as I think, but we'll take the Meandering River here in case we have to splash blue cards. I always try to keep that in mind in case I end up having to splash, especially with all the blue cards I'm seeing. And my last pick there was actually a Sears Lantern. I couldn't believe it. I feel really good about my first pack. I feel like uh, I'm a couple of green white bombs away from just a, a killer deck. You could pick up a lot of white removal in Battle for Zendikar, so I'm not so worried about the removal. I try to handle my creatures early. Um, here's pack two. Ooh, just out of frame. That's because I'm talking too much. Uh, but we see another step glider. Uh, the rare was actually Zendikar's Resurgent. Resurgence. Seven drop enchantment. Um, you know, it does have some payoffs, you know? Uh, it's, it's like an unstoppable train of sadness if your opponent plays it. But again, seven drops are not really what you want to be playing. Um, here I'm going to take the uh, shoulder to shoulder. I'm already regretting. I know, I remember while drafting, I was thinking about like, dang, I shouldn't have taken that birthing hulk. Um, the shoulder to shoulders are really important in the green white deck, in my opinion. Um, it's it's amazing. Support two, draw a card. Like that's just it's just the bee's knees. Uh, it's everything you want in the in the green white deck. It's the hamburger. It's the cheese. It's the bacon. It's the ketchup and the Dijon mustard on a sesame seed bun. So this pack looks like uh, spatial contortions in this pack. Uh, I'm talking too much, but bam, Relief Captain, just hiding out in the middle there. Uh, feeling pretty good. Feels good, man. Um, I actually talked to Alex after that, after we were taking a little break. Um, and he's like, yeah, I know I watch you stream, and I know you draft green and white. I did not like passing that to you. Here's another step glider. Um, might as well just go for the trifecta. I think I've drafted three here. I, I'm pretty sure I end up with four. I did not play all four. Uh, I played three. Probably could have played four. I mean, their their house. A two four vigilant flyer. Um, if this deck uh, had a weakness, it would be, I think, one more shoulder to shoulder. If I drop that birthing hulk for shoulder to shoulder, uh, the deck would have been just bonkers. It's still uh, 
carried me through to the finals. So here's a great Andu War Cleric here. Happy to see a two drop. I've got a couple of allies. Always about them, them two drops in draft. Now we're talking about just how many times Bob's seen Deadpool. There's like an old uh, retro theater down where he lives called the Rosebud. Here we have yet another step glider in this pack. And uh, I mean, what else can you say? I'm already thinking I might just go mono white. I think I just showed Bob that I have a place out of him. <laughs> We're pretty casual uh, there. I mean, I don't know. Everyone just builds their decks right next to each other anyway. So it's not like I don't really care if somebody knows what's in my deck. In fact, several times I just say out loud what I'm taking. Uh, there's a millionth rune in their wake. I mean, I saw like uh, five packs in a row that had that card in there. So uh, I'm glad I'm doing this voiceover the next morning because I kind of blew this pack with uh, keeping my head angle down. Here, there's another dead pack. Cultivator Drone is good. Green is good, but there's also a green-white uh, dual land, which is just, I mean, this just a, that's the MTG HQ sauce, the sauce boss of sauce. Not only am I just living the dream, uh, but I'm even getting on-color uh, dual lands. At a really late Expedition Raptor, you can see the Zendikar's Resurgent Wield. Uh, I often like to, if you watch me stream, I like to play, I like to gamble on things wheeling, and it did wheel. If there wasn't an Expedition Raptor in that pack, I absolutely would have taken it, and I would have played it. Here, I'm just going to cut the Zadis Commando. And as predicted, green is still wide open, or blue is still wide open. Uh, here we have a really nice little pack. Honestly, there's a make a stand in there, which I played. So I was getting a ton of playables really late. Like at this point, going into my into the Battle for Zendikar pack, my deck is is done. I'm pretty sure it's just done. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen playables. Um so it's not all the way done, but this is a great position to be in. Uh, when you, uh, it, 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 that's why gambling can pay off, but obviously more times than not, um, it's not going to. And it also matters if you know who you're drafting with, you know? Uh, there, I'm just gonna take the crab, I think. On to our, uh, Battle for Zendikar pack. Evolving Wilds looks good. Deathless Behemoth is a possible. Uh, Ulamog feels good, man. Feels good. The draft, the draft had somebody opened a Kalidus in that draft, and I actually think uh, an Oath Kozlik, but Oath Kozlik is not really a big deal. Uh, good thing I'm done with my deck because I did not see really anything. Uh, Tarjuru Stalwart is the pick there. I'm pretty sure. I just I'm talking too much, but I'm remembering my pick, so it should help. Here's a uh, here. Here's where the blue just is like crazy, okay? Here's a Clutch of Currents and nothing I really want. I'll just take the Clutch. There's a Clutch of Currents in this next pack that I also cut. And then the following pack is a Coastal Discovery. It, 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 it's uh, unbelievable. And now I'm talking about how uh, the Ghostbusters, new Ghostbusters trailer made, made me so sad. Feels, feels bad, man. Feels bad.
The argument, uh, no, uh, not argument. Here I take the Royals Retribution. I actually play it. I think it's one of the worst. Uh, it was, it was not great in BFC draft, but I actually think it's great in Oath draft because there's a ton of one and two drops and there were several times I just got to three for one with it. And that feels good. Um, the argument, I think some people said, well, we agreed the first Batman versus Superman trailer was pretty bad. Um, but then there's something. Somebody talks about a, spo a major spoiler in the trailer. I forget what movie it is. You might be able to hear us talking about it. Yeah, here's an Andu Rising in this pack, which is absolutely great. Two of the the MVPs, uh, there's another clutch. So it was Andu Rising, all these um, Awakened spells, crazy. I'll just cut. So it was Andu, it was clutch, Andu Rising, clutch. And this pack I'm pretty sure has a Coastal Discovery. I'm too busy talking, sorry about that guys, but it's fine, I remember all the picks. So I'm, I, McKinney Patrol is going to get played in my deck, so I take it, but I really didn't want to pass that uh, Coastal Discovery. But I figured, all right, I already cut two clutches, so I think I would have had a, you know, blue-white is not a great color combination, but I think I would have had a pretty insane blue-white deck. I mean, Coastal Discovery, double clutch, uh, all the step gliders for days, shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder relief captain. Um, blue-white would have been a totally fine deck for me to play. Yeah, I think if I do another IRL draft this week, I'll do it at Wizards Moo so I don't talk as much. But I'm, for your uh, nauseating pleasure, I'm next to a good friend of mine. I'm, I'm, I've got good friends of mine on both corners, so it's just... Plus, I'm on autopilot. Uh, my deck is already done, and it's just easy to, you know, uh, chill, take my picks, move on. Here we have a Sanctum of Ugin, uh, Orin Reef Invoker, which is fine. Totally fine pick. I actually play it. Uh, here's a really late Nissa's Renewal, and that really took my deck over the top. Between Andu Rising and... So basically the way my deck ran is I would either win by running you over with two and three drops, or uh, I would survive against the aggro builds by just gaining life, you know? So... I would gain life, and here's a late snapping Gnarlid that I, I don't even think I'd play. So I would get get behind against the aggro. I wouldn't trade. So I would like let people attack in, just trade punches, and then cast Undo Rising or Nissa's Renewal. Uh, just jump so far. There's the Holomir's Tide Caller too, by the way, which would have been insane with all those Awakened spells. So. I don't know. There's something in that pack that shouldn't have been. Bone Splinters, I just cut there. I probably value that. Oh, and I'm not saying, wow, I'm making fun of that family guy where he has the the, the uh, little head growth. Whatever his name is. Little Peter or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. But uh, overall, the deck turned out great. And uh, I'm pretty sure I take a look at it too. So let's get right into the gameplay.
Come on, man. Live a little. Go ahead. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Nice. So team five? You got it. I'm gonna scry. Two, three. Take one. Fourteen. Yeah. I saw that deck floating around. Yeah, I gained seven sure, from... Yeah, that was pretty gross. <laughs> that was gross. Step glider into relief captain. That was gross, yeah. Uh, I will pass turn. Oh, 
on a shirt. Give them all flying and vigilance. Nine. Four. I got you at five. Is that not right? I got minus four, minus five, minus one, minus five. Maybe you put mine on yours and that's why they were like different or whatever. So as you guys can see, this draft deck was pretty savage. Uh, made it up to the finals, split in the finals. We played it out anyway, but it didn't matter. Uh, we won four packs. I'm gonna open them for you. I'm gonna. I figured I'd stop going over the deck uh, as much now because I go over it in the video. And I also made some other small changes to it, so I cut out like the background noise while I was drafting. And even though I didn't get all the uh, all the picks in there, I was fortunately I did the over the uh, over the voiceover that today, and it's only 12 hours later, so I remembered basically every pick in the order I picked them. So we uh, he lets you pick whatever prize packs you want from standard. So I decided, obviously, I'm going to play the Jace Lottery with you guys. Um, I didn't take Oath because there was a Kalidus and uh, a Nissa opened out of Oath. So I knew that ba box was toast. And actually, the LGS guy was like, dude, I'll get you a different box. And I thought that was really cool. But uh, I said, I just want to open a $100 bill. So this is what we're going to do. So we got four packs of Origins. They changed the prize payout a little bit, but I'm okay with it. Uh, we have Call of the Full Moon, Somberwald Alpha, Malakir Callblade, and a rare is Animist Awakening. We have Foil Prism Ring. So, no Jace in that pack. But that just means we're likely to find one in this pack, obviously. Both packs had an infectious bloodlust on the front. All right. Magmatic Insight. Goblin Glory Chaser. War Oracle. Absolute bomb in that limited format. Gideon's Phalanx. Also a bomb. But uh, we got a Jace Emblem. So maybe, maybe, baby. If you guys were on stream, so if... You haven't already? Make sure you follow my stream at twitch.tv slash MTG headquarters. I draft almost every night of the week. Uh, last night even came on at midnight and streamed till almost three in the morning. 
Uh, it's good. The crowd is growing there, and it's just a ton of fun. And we open packs on stream. So there's that. And actually, the other night, we opened an expedition on stream. Scab Goliath. My backlights aren't on, and I don't want to... I can't reshoot pack openings, so these look a little dark. I'm sorry. Eyeblight Massacre, Ram Roller, and Jace. Ah, Molten Vortex. All crazy good limited cards, but no Jace. All right, last pack. Here we go. So, uh, the in-real-life drafts are just amazing, and uh, I love shooting them. And uh, you guys keep telling me that you actually want more. So I can do more of them, but I don't want to upload more than one a week on the main channel because I don't want people to get burned out. So maybe I'll up do some and upload them to MTG HQ Plays. If, that, if that's what you guys want, you let me know. Tormented Thoughts, Conclave Naturalists, Fiery Conclusion, and Jace. Ah, Noble Hierarch and a flip card. So we got the flip card and we got the uh, token, but no such luck. So I had a great time at draft. Uh, I love drafting good decks and being able to give that to you and then share my uh, opinions while I draft. And I love hearing your guys' feedback as well. So hope you enjoyed your time or hope you enjoyed this video. And we'll talk to you again real soon. all different kinds of content so if you haven't yet click on my face to subscribe if you want to watch more videos I've got some sweet playlists including this one where I open up every fat pack ever created I've also got this one over here where I open just about anything vintage and old and expensive for your enjoyment and all this is made possible by the awesome backers at our Patreon, which is linked in the description of every video. Hop on over there, check it out, see if it's something you might want to consider. If not, sit back, enjoy, and I'll still love you.